Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl Katrina and tonight I am going to be making my own custom pillowcase. Now this is a white supplementation. This is a 100% polyester pillowcase. So I don't want to just supplement it. That's kind of boring, right? We already know that we can supplement 100% polyester. So tonight I'm going to just supplement the background and then I'm going to embroider, attempt to embroider my own design, making my own little custom pillowcase. And I have the pillow already. I think this is a 12 by 12 pillow. 15 by 15. It's a 15 by 15 pillow. Okay. So I'm going to fill that after we're done. I'm still learning my embroidery machine, so I want to do something different. So I didn't want it to be white because my living room is not white. I have a lot of tan and blue and cream. So I already went and I printed out. You can't see it hardly at all, especially with the light. It's really light. It's subtle. It's like a cream, tan, marbleish um, background. So we're going to supplement that. I had to use my Epson 7710 because I know you're going to ask what printer because my Sawgrass, um, my Sawgrass SG500 is only up to, and I'm hoarse. Oh, I'm so hoarse. I have been rehearsing and yelling and doing all kind of stuff because I have a big Easter production coming up this weekend. So I got to get my voice together so I can be ready. Um, but I have, I'm directing this play. And I'm excited because it's my first time doing it down here. I used to always do it in New York. So I'm doing it down here. So that's why my voice is gone. You know, trying to project my voice. But I'm tired. But nevertheless, back to the project. So I already put in out my sublimation sheets. I'm using a sub sublimation paper. And this is 11 by 17. So I had to use two 11 by 17 to make sure I cover it. Once I know it supplements good and I like it, then I'll do the back. So I'm just testing it out first to see. And I know this is going to be light. It's probably going to be very vague, but I still didn't want it white, white. So I'm going to see how it looks. Where did I get my background from? I got my background from Creative Fabrica. So, and I got my image from Creative Fabrica as well that I'm going to put on the pillowcase. And I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to take an SVG file and transform it into a DST, into an embroidery file. Your girl is learning stuff out here. Now, speaking of Creative Fabrica, before we go any further, you know I got to tell you about Awesome Deals, right? The same website that sponsored the Cricut Maker 3 giveaway. Yes, Creative Fabrica, the site that I talk about all the time where I get most of all of my graphics from, most of my SVGs, backgrounds, all designs and fonts. You get all the commercial license. Y'all heard me talk about it so many times. But just in case you have not heard me talk about the site, I am letting you know about this awesome deal. So I know I've always talked about you get sign up under my link. You get the $1 a month all access. And then, you know, you pay $19 a month, right? Okay, yes. But today, running now until the 15th, there's this font called the Samantha font. It's an award-winning font. Right now, this font is on sale for $9. Now, you know, you might be saying $9, but guess what? It's originally priced at $79. And if you get the font, if you sign up for Creative Fabrica and you download this font, you get everything, all access to all the downloads, all of the fonts for free. Yes, for free, not just $1. You get it for free. So if you sign up and get the font, the Samantha font, which I'm going to show you in just a second, you'll get all access membership. You'll get to download your heart out until your heart is content with all types of SVGs, fonts, backgrounds, all different types of templates. So this is a deal that you do not want to miss or pass up. All you got to do is use my link down below in the description box. So let's jump into this project without further ado. Let's do some sublimation with some embroidery and make a custom pillowcase today. Now you guys already know what to do. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bells. That way you do not miss any of my videos for all reviews, DIYs, crafting projects, tutorials, and more. And of course me. But today I'm hoarse. I'm so sorry. Let's go on and get into this project. Okay, so I'm in my Creative Fabrica account. That's me over there. I'm going to go to favorites because I already have this font saved under my favorites. But it's called the Samantha Upright Script font. So this is it right here. This is a really, 
really cute font. It has all the glyphs with it. So I am so excited to use this. It's a really elegant font. You can put it on so many different type of projects. They give you all the examples of how it would look with the glyphs and without the glyphs. They give you so many different examples of how it looks on different backgrounds, different projects, and what you can use it for. These are all the different glyphs that you get with it. And if you scroll down, it tells you what all comes with it. It's just a really great deal. All you gotta do is just download it and then it'll come in a zip folder. I clicked it twice by accident. So I'm now going to open it. So once I open it, now I'm going to install it. Here's the font right here. I'm just going to install it. It will save now with all my other fonts. Once I go to Cricut Design Space, once I go to Silhouette Studios or any program that I'm using, it'll come up with all my other fonts. So it'll be there. So as you see here, you get over 88,000 different fonts, just fonts alone, and you have over 4 million different types of graphics. The possibilities on this site are endless for all the different projects that you can create. Now, if you have not signed up for Creative Fabrica, you can go ahead and do so by downloading the font and getting one month free access and you can cancel at any time. But if you are already a member of Creative Fabrica like me, go ahead and download this awesome font for free. Okay, so I set my heat press for 375, 60 degrees. I'm going to let this heat up and then we're going to supplement the pillowcase. It doesn't matter what side. But the zipper's at the bottom, so that's going to be the bottom of the pillowcase. I'm going to go ahead and get my butcher paper ready. I just want to make sure I have enough paper for the entire project. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. I'm going to stick this on the inside. You can use butcher paper or parchment paper. I'm using butcher paper. I'm gonna put that right on the inside. I don't want anything to go through, even though I will be supplementing the back side eventually, but I just wanna see how it looks on one side first. This is gonna be a full transfer. Perfect. Once it heats up, it'll be ready to go. So it's still heating up. And I don't know if you can see it a little bit better in the camera right here. It's really light really subtle I just really didn't want it like white white so we'll see how it does okay I'm gonna go ahead and press this and I know you guys are gonna ask again this came from heat press nation the link will be down below in the description box but these covers I get from heat press nation because I am using my black signature series heat press from heat press nation this is the 16 by 20 auto open with the slide out drawer and here we go. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. I know that it's supplemented. I can see it, but let's see how well. Ooh, ooh. That came out too dark. But y'all see what I did? I jacked that up. Ha! This is real life, baby. I thought it was going to be so much lighter. See, I be forgetting sometimes that, you know, the colors come out faded. And I definitely don't like that line. Mmm. Mmm. I'm about to scrap this whole project. I have no other choice but now to just go ahead and embroider the back without supplementing it. Wow. That looks like burnt clouds. It looks like burnt paper. <laughs> I do not like the color. It's kind of like a marble, but that's not the color I was going for. I was going for more of a cream. So it definitely didn't look that dark on the paper. But that thing came out real vibrant. It came out too yellow. So I definitely can't use that because that is not the color of my living room. Okay, so I do not like the way that came out at all. That came out horrible. So I'm just going to flip it on this side and I'm going to go ahead and use my tearaway stabilizer and I'm just going to embroider the back. I'm literally just going to embroider the back because I really want you to see how well 
Um, I really just want you to see how well you can use the auto digitizing feature in the Chroma Lux with the embroidery. Now you can do the same thing with the Inspire and um, I forgot what the middle one is called, but I'm using the Chroma Lux. So it just makes it so much easier. So you can literally take pretty much any design and you can turn it into an embroidery file, which is just awesome. And less work and less hassle. So I'm using my large hoop. This is um, size E. They're all alphabetically um, lettered. I was getting ready to say numbered. So I'm just going to insert it just like this. The zipper is kind of getting in the way. I got to stick that in there. Oh, get in there. That is really tight and I don't want to pop the zipper. Okay, this pillowcase is giving me a lot of problems today. We got to stretch that fabric. Okay. I made it work. I'm going to stick this in there. I didn't want to pop the zipper. I'm laying that stabilizer nice and flat. Okay. So it's going to go in like this on the machine. So you want to make sure that the open part is on your right hand side. And I am definitely going to be investing in some mighty hoops soon. Some mighty hoops. I just want to make sure, you know, I'm perfecting in the craft and making sure that, you know, I'm doing well before I invest in, you know, other stuff. Because I'm just using the hoops that comes with the machine. And again, I'm using the MT1501. It's a 15 needle embroidery machine. And I love it. I love it. There's just so much. I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Right here, I'm just taking that latch and just making sure it's tight. So really quick, I'm back in Creative Fabrica. I'm under my favorite section in the top left-hand corner. That's the bundle that I use to use for my background. It comes with multiple colors, but I tried to use the lightest ones. As you see, it came out too dark, but nevertheless, we're going to move on. I'm using a graphic called Home Sweet Home. You can definitely type in any type of keyword to bring up what you're looking for because there are just so many graphics in Creative Fabrica. So sometimes you might not be able to find everything or see everything so you definitely have to type in certain keywords to bring up certain graphics if you have something particular that you're searching for so this is my favorite sections I have so much saved under here I just did this my first Easter um, embroidery design which came out so cute you can check that out on my stories but we're gonna do home sweet home I wanted something simple something nice and something cozy warm and welcoming for my living room to put on this pillow so this is a SVG file you can use it as a PNG SVG, but we're going to transform it into a DST to embroider. So I'm going to take this on over, download it, and put it into my Chroma software. Let me show you how I do it. I'm using Chroma Lux. As you see, I'm just going to create a new design. And now I'm just going to go and find the file that I just did. And that was called Home Sweet Home. So there it is right there. And I'm going to open the SVG file. I'm opening the SVG. There you go. And now what I want to do, because this is not an embroidery file, this is not a DST um, to embroider. So now I have to transform. So with Chroma Lux, it makes it so much easier and so much simpler to just automatically take an SVG and transform it into a DST. So that way you can embroider because Lord knows I would still be fooling around with this trying to make sure that I can embroider it. First off, I'm going to measure this and see how big this is because I need to make sure I have it measured correctly. So right now, that's a nine. That's nine inches. I want it to be in the center of my, um, that's about a nine by four and a half. So I do want that to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to make this about 10 inches. And there we go. Just make it a little bit bigger than 10 inches. Okay, so now it's at 10 inches. Move it back to the center. And now I'm going to come up here into my left-hand corner where you see this A at. And I'm going to click Auto Digitizing. I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. It says, do you want to auto-digitize the selected artwork? I'm going to click Yes. 
and you can't really see it right here so it looks exactly you know the same so what I'm gonna do is gonna come up here to this cube and this is for a realistic view so I'm gonna click the little box up here and now you can actually see the stitching let me make it a little bit bigger so you so if I zoom in now you can see this is perfectly perfectly auto digitized for me I didn't have to do anything and I am now just going to embroider this design on the pillow if you wanted to change the stitching or do anything like that you can definitely come in here and you can do that but I'm gonna leave it alone it looks like it's a complex fill it looks perfect to me I'm not trying to be picky um, it looks really nice so I'm just going to leave it like that and we are going to embroider this baby. So now what I have to do, um, on a PC it was much easier, and it still is easy, but because I'm on a Mac, now I need to take my USB, and I need to save it to the USB drive, so now I am going to come up here and I'm going to click Save. I'm gonna keep the same name, Home Sweet Home, but with the Mac, you need to manually change the, the file name. So right now it says RDE, I'm gonna type in DST, so that way it will save to the correct format. I'm going to now drop down, and I'm going to come under Katrina's iMac, and the name of my USB says no name, so that's where it's gonna go under no name for home sweet home DST I'm going to click save and now I'll be able to transfer it to my Recoma MT1501 how easy and simple was that now let's go ahead and embroider this on my pillowcase so I decided to come back in because I didn't like that the file was all one color. So now in Silhouette Studios or Cricut Design Space, if you have an SVG, you can automatically change the colors so easily. But I had to learn really quick how to change the colors and how to add colors. So I'll definitely do future tutorials. If you want, let me know in the comments down below. But I'm gonna show you what I originally intended for it to look like, but it didn't work out that way. But I wanna go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of the video. This Recoma machine really stressed me out you will see what happened but I just want to show you I did change the colors I learned how to do it had to um, learn how to add colors to this SVG file or to this new DST file so it's supposed to look like this but it didn't turn out that way but just go ahead and I'm hopping to the video I'm gonna show you how it came out on the Recoma MT1501 and I'll come back and I'll show you in future tutorials how to do all of this if you like okay so I'm going to go ahead and put this in and I'm just gonna make sure that the bottom is not going up top, just so it doesn't get caught or stitched. You can show that bottom is hanging. Perfect. I already transferred my file, so my file is right there. I already have my hoop selected, hoop E. Click OK. It's moving. I'm going to go ahead and select my colors. So for the first color, it's going to be black. My black is on spool two. My second color is three. And my last color is green, which I do not have up there. So I am going to go with the gold. Um, so this is where you can change. My green is, um, is not threaded. So I'm going to go with the gold color. So my goal is color 11. So I'm going to go with color 11. Click OK. I'm going to lock it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and trace out my design. And I'm just holding that down. This lets me know where it's really close to the thing. So this tells me the spacing of where my embroidery is going to be. Here we go. So just as an FYI, this project did not turn out the way I intended it to, but I'm still posting this video because this is a lot of work that goes into creating these videos. So now I'm going to ask you guys for help if you see where I can improve because I'm still learning the embroidery machine. Everything started working beautifully, but as you can see, my hearts were supposed to be red and I don't know how I, once I added the colors, I think I entered the colors wrong. So that's okay. That's the least 
of the worries. Somehow I hit duplicate. So it started duplicating second colors on top of colors. When I tell you things just went from zero to 100 really quick with this project but as i said i'm still posting the video so i want you guys to see what happened please stay tuned because i almost literally cried over this simple pillow but i want you guys to see keep watching So as you can see here from this point, I have no idea what happened. I don't know why or how it was starting to do a second color on top of the black. Just keep watching. So now thus far, other than it's stitching out the wrong color, as you can see from the swooshes and the hearts, it's multiple colors. It's black, red, and yellow. It's supposed to be just the hearts in red and the swooshes in gold. And now I'm at the home sweet home section. And other than it being the wrong color, again, it's supposed to be black. It's stitching out in red. I'm using the complex fill stitch and it seems to be stitching perfectly. It's nice. It's consistent in my eyes. You know, as I, as I said, I'm still learning, but it's stitching out perfectly. I haven't had any thread breaks or anything. Thank you, Jesus. But keep watching. All hell is about to break loose. And I'm about to lose my mind with this machine. Okay, so um, doesn't look like I have a thread break. The thread is still there. Okay, my machine just stopped. I see my light flashing. So that means I probably have too much tension in the thread. So I'm just going to loose it just a little bit. The thread is still there. So it's probably just a little bit too much tension. So I just loosen the knob, the tension knob, and I'm gonna see if that works. It stopped again. And like I said, it's not a thread break, not a needle break. So it has to be. Okay. So I just kept playing with the tension. Okay, this is the third time, and at this point, I'm starting to get just a little ticked off. Okay, I really don't know what the problem is. This is stitching perfectly.
Okay, so I don't know what's going on. I don't have any thread breaks. I'm assuming it has to be tension issues. Has to be. But I keep adjusting it. I keep adjusting it. I've adjusted it so much. This is really pissing me off. I don't know what is going on. Wow, okay. Okay, so maybe I'm turning the knob the wrong way. This is really pissing me off. I truly don't know how to fix it. Time I think I got it. All I can do is play with the knobs until this is like insane. This is really insane. I really want to cry right now. I have so much stuff to do. Like, so much stuff to do. I freaking give up. I do not feel like putting on another video. <laughs> I don't watch so many videos. This machine is really playing with me tonight. Lord, we come against this tension. We come against these issues. Keep running. Come on. We need you to run. I'm running on faith right now. This thing running on threads, so it ain't running on faith. Oh, this is driving me up the wall, up the wall. Is it working? I'm about to start shouting. Let me not get too happy. Oh, come on now. See when you pray? Come on, Thread. I need you to stop playing with me. The enemy trying to stop my business, but it's not happening. I'm new, I'm a beginner. We're not having these problems up in here. I need this machine to work. Where is oil? We're about to bless this oil. I took that oil that the machine came with and I started fussing and praying at the same time. Sometimes you got to speak to those machines. You got to speak to your mouth and then tell it to move. So I was not playing. I was fussing and praying at the same time. Listen, stop playing with me, okay? Because we was just working. We was just working. And now you want to work against me. You want to work against me? We're not doing that up in here. We're not doing that. Start. Run. Embroider. Do what you do. MT-1501. I'm about to... God blasted. 
I need you to work. I don't know what is going on tonight. This has never happened to me before. So I will be doing some testing with all some doing attention tests, whatever that thing is. I definitely have to do that. Because this thing is pissing me off. Pissing me off. Y'all about to see the other side of training. Y'all about to see the other side of Trina. Y'all about to see the other side of Trina in a second. Come on. Come on. I'm done. I am so done with this. I literally have like look 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 at what's left. Look where I'm at. And it just keeps stopping. Y'all see that? Just keep stopping. I'm over this machine. I don't even know what to say. I couldn't have planned this. I couldn't have planned this. Y'all know I didn't plan this, so I'm pissed. I am pissed. This is stopping me. Everything that I have to do. Literally everything. I don't forgot which way I was turning. I'm going to finish this video. I'm going to finish this. And I know somebody gonna have so much to say in this video and my comments gonna blow up, right? Everybody know how to fix the problem. Well, tell me, tell me. Oh my goodness, we finally finished the freaking S. After an hour, we finished the S. this for y'all so you won't make these mistakes and here we go again let's just see it's a good thing I don't curse because I would definitely be cursing in this video So I finally got to the end of this design. It took me over an hour just to embroider that one word sweet. When I tell you frustration was at an all time high, I can't even tell you I fixed the problem because I turned these knobs so many times in both directions. I got so confused. I was literally second guessing myself. I watched so many videos, but I am going to go back and watch some more, do some more tutorials. I'm definitely going to be calling Rakoma because I definitely want to master this machine. So if you guys have any comments um you can definitely leave them down below to let me know what happened but i'm not sure if when i moved you know my tension knobs got you know messed up but this is literally only the third time i've used my machine since i've been in this house and i have not used the color red so red was the only issue but you guys look at the stitching you guys tell me do you think it's too tight do you think it's too loose you know was i turning the knobs the right way i don't know i'm just glad this is over All right, that took a lot. Like, that really took a lot. Oh my God, that was crazy. Okay, but we finally finished. I don't know what happened to my black. This was literally supposed to be black and the hearts were supposed to be red. I don't even care, that's not the issue. Let me go bring it over there so you can take a closer look at this catastrophe. Okay, so this is it up close. And as you can see, you see like over here where it's 
look like it doesn't go all the way to the ends. Take a look. Well, look at that. This is where the sides, I got like two colors. I don't know how I did that. I did hit duplicate, but listen, this is just a lesson now. I need to retitle this video on what not to do, or I don't even know. I can't even title it how to fix the tension because I didn't fix it technically. So the home was done first. So it looks to me like it's perfect. It's a complex fill, but it almost looks like it's a satin fill, kind of, right? Because it's so tight. Is that too tight? I hope I don't sound crazy. I'm so hoarse. I don't like the way I sound. But when you come over here to the S, this is when I started having all the issues. This is when we started having all the issues. So if you look at the S... It does look really tight, but to me, that looks good. But it was right up in here, this part. So I can kind of see a little difference, a slight variation, because this is when I started playing with the knobs right in here. Ultimately, let's take it off and let's see how it looks. Let's take it off. This is my first time, you know, doing a pillow. I'm gonna pull that out. And I definitely will not be putting this on my couch <laughs> or on my chair. So this is the back, the inside rather. I did use tearaway, so maybe, you know, I could have used something else. I'm just gonna hold it. I'm gonna just, I don't wanna just yank you know, all the way around it first. I'm sorry, guys. When I do videos, I really want to make sure I'm giving, you know, accurate information. But as I said, I'm still learning this embroidery machine. So it is definitely a learning curve. Anyone who has an embroidery machine or thinking about getting one, if you think it's just going to be easy and simple, it's not. You really have to like spend time, you know, working it. I'm like so busy. So, you know, I really do try to put time in it, but I do need to put more time in it. When you're someone like me who has a kid with a disability, who has some challenges, and I won't say disability. My son just has some challenges um, um, because I don't like that word. Um, he's just different and unique. And we just have some challenges right now. So if you're like me and you have a kid who has some challenges and some difficulties, then, you know, uh, that's where most of my time goes. Like, literally, sometimes I can't put out a video because I'm putting out fires around my house. Um, for the most part, he's a happy, happy kid, and we have no problems. But it's just those other days where we can barely get through the day. I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't really care. I'm not going to use this at all. But I did like the design. I did want to embroider the corners. Um, and put like, you know, some nice little swirls around it. But I am going to stop because that took literally so much longer than I intended to do. But I was going to really make it nice and do like, you know, a pattern around the sides to really make it nice. But um, next time, <laughs> next time, I promise. This is what happened when things go wrong. So I just want you guys to know out there, because a lot of people don't post. Stuff like this. They do not post stuff like this. I'm telling you. I keep it real, right? I'm letting y'all see my struggles. I'm letting y'all see my struggles. Because I struggled today. And I'm tired. And it's partly because I'm so tired. My friend keeps telling me that I just really need to get some rest. I have a lot going on. A lot. And I feel like I'm just not giving 100% in a lot of areas. That's why I had to get rid of my son today. I got family coming in town this weekend and I gotta still get my house all the way together. 
before people come and stay up in here because I'm having a huge play this weekend. I'm in charge, directing, doing this play this weekend, and I'm just under a lot of stress and trying to fulfill orders and trying to make deadlines with partnerships and trying to put out videos and trying to put out fires with my son. But ultimately, I do like it. I love the feel of embroidery. I just love the way it looks once it's perfect. And this would have been a really nice pillow just to throw on my chair. But I jacked it up with the color that looks hideous. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just did a solid color. I was trying to go for the marble background. So as you see, I was trying to go for the marble background because the pillowcase was white and I didn't want white. Now, when you look at it from afar, it looks perfect right looks perfect from afar right but of course i don't like the colors on the side i messed up the colors and um i'm just gonna deal with it right maybe i might try to supplement resupplement the back a solid color and stitch it again but ultimately i got it done i did not stop i completed it i stuck with it um, just have some stitching issues, slight variations, but you can hardly tell, like I said. So give me a thumbs up for trying, at least. Um, I promise I'm going to master this embroidery machine because this is a huge money maker. So now don't forget the special that I mentioned earlier, the Samantha font, $9 only with all access, everything you can download for one month. You can cancel at any time. Use the link down below. I am so tired. I'm going to go lay on this pillow. This is not just going to be my bummy, throw around, beat up, lay around pillow because I really put my heart and soul into this pillow and I tried. I really wanted to make it nice. I wanted to really do my embellishments on the side. But sometimes we don't get it always perfect and that is okay. I still love my embroidery machine and I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to keep working hard. And that's what you do. Anytime you're learning something, you just keep working hard and don't give up. But I wanted to still post this video because I want to encourage you because I know I get a lot of comments. I get a lot of, you know, messages in my DM. Things are not working out. But I don't have anyone to turn to when things are not working out. I just got to go find the answers myself. I got to keep searching. I got to keep watching videos and I got to keep practicing. So as always, be great. Move in grace and I'm out. I'm home sweet home in my new house and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm sorry this did not come out perfect, but I love you all and I hope you forgive me. And now I'm just going to take a few minutes to test this pillow out because your girl is tired. Peace.